Dynasty draft season is in full swing. And I'm here today to talk to you about four quarterbacks. Two that I like if you're running like a win now dynasty team. Yeah, maybe you're looking just in a three year window. And two others that are more of your traditional dynasty quarterbacks. Definitely look to the future, but these guys can definitely help you win this year. But before we get into that, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comments. We'd be happy to answer them. All right, let's get into it. The first quarterback I want to look at is Geno Smith of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, the Seattle Seahawks were one of the most efficient passing offenses in the league last season. Now, they were kind of middle of the road in passing attempts, but they finished seventh in completions and tied for fourth in touchdowns. And that was good enough to have Geno Smith finishing as the QB5. So it makes no sense to me right now that he's going off draft boards as the QB22. You know, the 2023 NFL draft and the weeks leading up to it were also a big indicator of the trust I feel Seattle has in Geno Smith for at least the next few seasons. A month prior to the draft, Smith signed a three-year contract extension with the team. Then, in the draft, Seattle took football guy's rookie wide receiver, number one, Jackson Smith Najigba. The Seahawks then opted not to even draft a quarterback in this draft, although they did sign Holton Allers out of Eastern Carolina to pair as a backup with Drew Locke. You know, we're in an interesting time right now where starter drafts are skewing ADP and pushing really great quarterback play down your draft boards. Geno Smith going at 22nd overall is a value that I really expect to correct itself as the season draws closer. So go ahead and pounce on that value now. Another player I see contributing to your teams right away next season is Detroit Lions quarterback Jared Goff. Now, Jared Goff finishes the QB 10 last season, thanks in great part to a 29 to seven touchdown to interception ratio. He was fantastic, even better at home, where he had a 23 to three touchdown to interception ratio. Only three interceptions at home. Kind of hard to believe. Uh, one area though, that I thought the Lions came up a little short last season was in the utilization of their running backs in the passing game. Yes, they had DeAndre Swift, but he was barely on the field. Uh, this season though, Detroit addressed that by bringing in two very capable pass catching backs for 2023 and David Montgomery, and when they drafted Jameer Gibbs. And while the Lions and Goff already have a dynamic pair of wide receivers in Ramonra St. Brown and Jamison Williams, I think it's these two running backs that I see help Goff taking that next step forward into possible top seven, eight quarterback range. The one wrinkle I see here with Jared Goff that I didn't necessarily see with Geno Smith is that the Detroit Lions did draft Goff's possible heir apparent and Tennessee quarterback, Hendon Hooker. Now, we know Hooker's probably not going to touch the field this season due to a late-season injury he had last November to his ACL. However, we still could be looking at a position battle going into 2024. But the way that I see it, if Jared Goff turns into performance like last season, builds upon it this year, takes the Lions to the playoffs, I don't see the Lions moving on from him even next season or possibly for a few years to come. Well, I do love that value for Jared Goff and Geno Smith. Jared Goff going as the 19th quarterback in Dynasty Leagues, according to Sleeper ADP, and Geno Smith going as the 22nd. Their shelf life compared to the other two quarterbacks I want to talk about are admittedly a little shorter. The first one of those quarterbacks is Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Uh, there was no sophomore slump for Lawrence as he finishes the QB7. He had his first 4,000-plus yard passing season, with 30 total touchdowns. And Lawrence receives a major addition to his receiver room with the arrival of former Atlanta Falcons wide receiver, Calvin Ridley. And while it's almost two year layoff for Ridley due to suspension and some personal issues that saw him step away from the game completely, it should not take him much time at all to return to form. Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, and a late career breakout tight end, Evan Ingram also remain dependable options for Lawrence. And I think what I like most about Lawrence from a dynasty perspective is where you're able to draft him right now. He's currently going as the last player in ADP from this, my second tier of quarterbacks. Now, the first tier of quarterbacks includes Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, and Josh Allen. That's pretty universal across the board. Those are the top three quarterbacks in, in dynasty and in fantasy football. However, that second tier of quarterbacks with Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, and Trevor Lawrence might be my favorite tier of quarterbacks this year. And knowing that I can get Lawrence as the last of those, even though I have him ranked just behind Joe Burrow, makes me feel really good with his value. He's going as the QB eight right now. He finishes the QB seven last year. Grab that value while you can. 
know, the last player I want to talk about is a true blue example of draft this rookie, why you can get him at this dynasty value. And that's Indianapolis Colts, new quarterback, Anthony Richardson. On draft night 2023, Richardson fell into the best possible situation he could have asked for that seems to be setting him up for success everywhere he looks. And of the rookie quarterbacks drafted, he has without a doubt the best group of wide receivers and Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, and fellow rookie Josh Downs. Now, the Colts have also started to address their deficiencies in their offensive line, bringing in a highly touted rookie, Blake Friedland, out of BYU, and also Tony Sprano Jr. as the new offensive line coach. I think what I like most for Richardson in Indianapolis is the mentorship he's going to receive from new head coach Shane Steichen. Now, Shane Steichen is the offensive coordinator for the last three seasons that worked with Justin Herbert and Jalen Hurts. And whenever you've got someone like that working with probably the most athletic quarterback to ever come out of the NFL draft, you have to pay attention. The stock's high in Anthony Richardson, and I'm drafting him as a top 10 dynasty quarterback. If you're interested in more of the content we have here at Football Guys, go ahead and click the videos to the side to see what else we have going on here this week. Thank you.